So, is living on a boat really cheaper than living on land? Let's take a look at the, the real cost of living afloat, from the cheapest to the most expensive options and how they compare with life on land. Ask most liveaboard boaters and they'll tell you that uh, it's certainly cheaper than living on land, but is it really? The answer really depends, you see, on many factors. It can be cheaper, and clearly costs will vary depending on whether you're a single person, a couple, or a family. But for the sake of simplicity, let's look at a couple, over 60, living on board a 60-foot narrowboat on the canal system, who've paid 40 grand for their vessel. Now, the best estimate we have of such a pair living on shore comes from a survey from the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, which estimated they would need 266 pounds a week, near enough, to live a reasonable lifestyle. That's 60 odd quid on food and drink, nearly a tenner on clothes and shoes, 103 pounds on housing, 20 on household goods and services, you know, tea towels to furnitures, microwaves, etc. 23.65 on personal goods uh, such as uh, medical items, um, 4.65 on transport, and another 43 quid on social and cultural activities like holidays and TV licenses, etc. If the same couple were living on a boat, many of those costs remain the same. So the area of contrast is with the housing cost of £103 a week, a fairly modest figure as it assumes the rental of a two-bed council flat along with council tax, fuel heating and some decorating. But on a boat, the main cost is the purchase of the vessel itself, and if you have to borrow the money on a boat mortgage, that can be substantial. Borrowing the whole 40 grand on a 10-year personal loan would mean forking out £527 a month, £120 a week. But that assumes you have a, a house to provide security and are willing to pay an eye-watering um, interest rate. Most lenders will only finance a liveaboard mortgage for boats in excess of, excess of 43,000. And this would allow the lender to provide a 30 grand loan with a 30% deposit for the remainder. But lenders are much more reluctant to hand over any cash at all unless you have a spotless credit history. And even then they insist on high interest rates and lots of security. Barclays, for instance, need confirmation that you have permanent moorings. But they will lend, or used to be able to lend up to 80% of the valuation of the vessel. You have to be insured, of course, and you can get basic insurance on a 60-foot boat worth 40 grand for about, to about 250, 300 pounds a year. Many, boat, many insurance companies will pay or charge more. Um, but a basic third party in, uh, insurance can cost as little as £100. But proper residential boat cover with a decent amount of contents, you're looking at best part of £400 with a broker like Targate. Then, of course, you need a license. Um, and if you are using the Canal and River Trust system, uh, a basic license for a 60 foot boat sets you back just over £1,000 and a gold license so you can use the Environment Agency's waters as well, pushes that up to about 13, 1400 pounds. That's all for a 60 foot boat. There are other running costs. Diesel is what you need to generate your electricity and how much you use depends on how far you travel, the time of the year, and what demand you have for electronic bits and pieces such as tellies and washing machines and vacuum cleaners. A good bank of solar panels will save you a lot, but as a general gauge, a boat moving around the system with a fairly small engine and making the most of the concession of only paying the basic price for diesel, for red diesel, um, will probably spend about six, eight hundred, nine hundred pounds a year. Whether your boat is new or old, there'll always be the running costs of engineers, spare parts, etc. And uh, <clears throat> or you can subscribe to an organisation like River and Canal Rescue. They uh, 
but I would personally allow some money for spares and uh, put it to one side and call out somebody local. You need to have your bottoms, your boat's bottom blacked every couple of years, around the £800 mark. You'll need a boat safety for certificate every four years, about 150 And then every 10 years, you may well need a complete repaint between at least £8,000, probably 10, depending on your requirements and your wallet. So taking average figures and excluding the painting and the cost of any finance, I, I reckon that works out at around £50 a week or about half the housing costs of that couple living in the council flat. Of course, if you moor in a marina all year, that changes the picture. With the fees for a residential boat as much as £4,000 in the Midlands and three times that in London, so that puts at least another £50, £60 a week on the cost and puts you back on a par with that couple in the council flat. Same as broadly true of a CRT residential mooring, as they now fetch silly prices in online auctions. So heating costs are a bit cheaper than the flat, about £10 a week for the couple in the flat and if you Use a coal fire, say, for five months of the year, two bags of coal a week, eight fifty a bag. That's about £6.50 a week over the year. Um, if you're not using gas for heating, it's about another five or ten pounds a week. All of which means you have a, a lot more disposable income to add to the £43 a week spent on social and cultural items in that survey. Now, on the canal, of course, that may take the form of some delightful, wa delightful watering holes. But more seriously, before you spend anything, make sure it's a way of life that suits you. Do your research, talk to friends in Liverpool, discuss the lifestyle well before you commit your life savings. <laughs>